was the load. Don't y'all love the way I sing that? So I'm saying, by the time we get to video number six, y'all gonna be singing it with me, right? <laughs> uh, I just want to take a quick minute today to read a few verses out of James chapter one. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Can I just stop right there? The trying of your faith worketh patience. Last week, we talked about faith being the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And it just tells us right here in James 1 and 3 that the trying of that faith work is patience. So now here we are, we have a God who tells us in Hebrews 11 and 6 that without faith, it's impossible to please him. And then faith is evidence, substance of things that we can't even see. And now in James is telling us that this same faith is going to work patience. So if we think about that, it's starting to develop a pattern here because now it's saying I have to have faith to please God. But yet faith, I can't even see it. But now this faith is teaching me patience. And I think that's really real, oh God, Jesus, I love you. I think it's important for us to understand that because we know that God loves us and we know that when we pray earnestly and when we have faith, we're pleasing him. And we oftentimes see the results of that faith and we see the results of that uh, blessing that comes upon our faith. But it also tells us here that it's going to take patience because sometimes what we are asking for or what we are seeking God for is going to take some time. It's going to take some time because sometimes in the midst of that waiting, God is going to be breaking some things off. God is going to be revealing some things. God is going to be changing some things. God is going to be stepping in the midst of our circumstances and reorchestrating our paths. And he's going to come in and he's going to take pieces from this side of the puzzle and rearrange it and put it on this side of the puzzle because he wants when we get to the end place, when we get to the the blessing place when we get to that birthing place he wants to make sure that everything is aligned in his will he wants to make sure that everything is aligned the way that he has designed for it to be and when we have faith and when we trust him it means that God I may not understand it I definitely might not see it but I have to understand that when I get to that place in you or when I get to that place that you have for me or when I get to that blessing that I've been and praying for for five, 10, sometimes 15 years, I know that it's going to be worth the wait because you took the time to strategically align me and teach me patience in the process. But let patience have her perfect work that she may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So again, in this patient process, it's going to have a perfect word, not meaning perfect without error or perfect without flaw, but it means complete. It means whole. It means so now when I get there, because I had to go through something, because I had to purge some things, because I had to change the essence, I had to change what I thought I wanted, because I had to change what I thought. Thought I should be doing what I thought should happen when I thought it should happen where I thought it should happen but all of those things still boil down to I thought I thought I wanted I tried I moved I walked I ran and all the time I forgot to check with God because in the process he may be saying no and we may be reorchestrating his nose Oh my God, let me stop right there. <laughs> I'm getting excited. I don't know about y'all, but I had a uh, episode of Ayala Van Zandt Fix My Life. It came on TV and I watched it and Ayala had a young lady look in the mirror. And in the mirror, she asked her, please tell me what you see. And the young lady started to go on and on about how I'm this and I'm that and I look good and I see myself and I see this, I see that. And then all of a sudden, the cameraman turned to the mirror and the mirror was blurred out. So a young asked the young lady, how did you see all of these things about yourself? And in this mirror, it wasn't even clear.
In this mirror, you could not even clearly see your own image. So how was it that you could see all of these things? How was it that you could give me this explanation of all these wonderful things about yourself? See, the purpose of that exercise was to teach her that sometimes when we look out into the world or when we look out into our circumstances or when we look around in our situations, we sometimes with our carnality will try to make a situation look the way we want it to look. And all along, because the situation is distorted or because the situation is not adding up, we block that out because we don't want to accept that. We want to always accept what's good. We want to always accept what's comfortable. We want it to always to be to our own liking, to our own, the way we love it, the way we want it. And sometimes God is saying, baby, it don't even look like that. It looks like this. And while you're having faith and while you're trusting me, you have to have patience and let that patience convict. Let that patience turn things around. Let that patience teach. Let that patience straighten out the crooked ways. Let that patient have a perfect, complete, whole work. Verse 5 says, if you lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. So now in the process of this process of developing patience and letting our faith uh, test our patience, now, when we don't understand or when things don't line up, instead of us going back to that cloudy mirror and making our own testimony or making our own good thing, where God is saying, if you don't understand, if you don't have the wisdom, all you have to do is ask me. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask God and he will give it to you. So that means he's going to then sometime in his own way, in his own prayer, process teach you what it is that he wants you to see all along while testing your faith and teaching patience but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the lord so now we are also asking in faith so you see how God ties it right back around saying that sometimes we won't see it. Sometimes we won't understand it. But with that patience that's causing us to be complete, that's causing us to be lined up in his word, lined up in his will, we are asking him for the wisdom to help us decipher it. Asking him to lead us. The Bible says, lead not into your own understanding, but acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Don't you see how all of these things tie into each other? Don't you see how all of these things still bring us right back to God, who is the author and finisher of our faith? Meaning that once again, it is him who will give us the direction to go in the path that he wants us to give. And here we come right here to verse eight. It says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. So now I'm complete, I'm whole, and now I'm asking in faith, but I can't be this way today and that way tomorrow. Meaning that now that I've asked God to help me understand because I'm walking by faith and not by sight, now I've got to make sure that I'm in line. I've got to make sure that I am doing exactly what it is that he wants me to do. I have to make sure that I'm not wavering. I've got to make sure that every time something don't go my way, I don't run out the church. I got to make sure that every time something don't go my way, I'm not turning around trying to find an answer for myself. I've got to make sure that every time things don't seem to be as speedy as I want them to be, I am not rushing my process of being perfect or whole or complete because now I want it to be the way I want it to be. Today, I just wanted to bring that out because it hits me more than it may hit you today. But I'm hoping that I'm helping somebody out there because I want to tell a little story. I've been with my company going on six years. In February, it will be six years that I've worked for this company. And in the process of these six years, I've applied for one position five times. And I haven't 
haven't really told many people that because sometimes that can seem a little embarrassing. Sometimes that can seem a little like, girl, you should have gave up a long time ago. Sometimes that can look like that just ain't for you because you keep trying and you keep trying and it's not working. But I remember praying to God, asking him, Lord, I want you to put me where you want me to be. I remember talking to my pastor and he told me that my prayer had to change, that I can't pray for a specific position, but I had to pray that wherever God put me in position, that I would be successful. I had to make sure that in this faith process, because I couldn't see it, because I kept getting hit with no after no after no. So now I'm asking God, what is it that you want from me, Lord? Because I'm seeking you. I'm trying to be where you want me to be. I'm trying to let patience have her perfect work right now. But I don't understand because all I see is no, no, no. Even when I know that my resume is in the right situation, I know that my skill set is right in line up. I know that I understand the business. I know that I understand what it takes to be here in this level, but I got people coming from the left and I got people coming from the right telling me that I'm not qualified. I got people telling me that I don't have the right documents in my archive. I've got people telling me that I don't have the right letters behind my name. So now Lord, I'm asking you because I don't understand the process. The fifth time I went into the interview, in the back of my mind, I almost felt as if I shouldn't even be here because I've done this five times. But then I had to remember, patience had to have her perfect work. So even though I knew what I had done, I knew what my resume said, I was still using I. I knew what I could do. I knew what I was capable of. But it was the Lord who said, I am the one who is going to direct your path. Lean not into what you think. Lean not into what you understand because your carnal mind and understanding can't even put together the things that God has lined up for us. But I want to let you know that I got the phone call this morning and they told me that the job was mine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it, thank you, Lord. If you're not, if you haven't been in my shoes, if you don't know what I've been through, if you don't know what it took to get here, you may not understand the emotion behind it, the passion behind it. But I'm trying to help somebody just to know that if you listen to God, if you trust God, if you put him first, if you give him your all, if you trust him in a faith that you can't even see, letting patience take over and have a perfect work that she may be whole in the end, the blessings of the Lord are rich and they add if no sorrow, meaning that everything it took for me to get here, every sacrifice that I had to make, even when I thought that it should have happened three or four years ago, just believing that God God knows the plans that he has for us. He knows what's best for my life. He understands. He directs my path. I just love the Lord. I love the Lord. And I know that it's easy. It's real easy to get off track sometimes. It's real easy to get off course sometimes. It's real easy to get wrapped up sometimes in what we see. It's real easy to get caught up in our circumstances. It's real easy to get caught up in those no's and start to feel like I'm not qualified or I'm not adequate or I'm not doing it right or it's not happening right. But I just have to remember and I want to remind everybody out there that sometimes Sometimes it's just God saying, take your, your trust out of these things. Take your trust out of these jobs. Take your trust out of these relationships. Take these trust out of these false prophets and take your trust out of these worldly things and take your trust out of the money and put your trust in me and believe that I will put you exactly where you need to be in due season. In God's timing, it will happen if you faint not. In two more minutes, I'm about to run around this room and tear all this backdrop up. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to just let y'all go. I love you. I love you. I love you. Be blessed.